All right. You think cold is cranking up the AC? That winter means throwing on an extra hoodie? Let me tell you a secret. What you know is child's play. Mother Nature, back in the day, hit the freeze button and left it on for like a hundred thousand years. That's a ridiculously long time. Imagine a winter that never ends. A world covered in glaciers where food is scarce, death is around every corner, and temperatures plunge to minus 4, minus 22, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Our ancestors didn't have heaters, no insulated homes, no warm pizza delivery. But they didn't just survive, they hacked the Ice Age. They dominated that whole damn thing. If you're already feeling a chill down your spine and want to gain all the secrets of how Homo sapiens became masters of ice survival like a place to see Bear Grylls, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to Extinct Doc because we're about to show you how they did the impossible. You good? Let's do this. To kick things off, we need to understand the stage for this extreme survival saga. The Pleistocene, or Ice Age, wasn't just one single continuous event. It was a complex series of glacial and interglacial pulses, with massive ice sheets advancing and retreating, each lasting tens of thousands of years. But the most brutal period of all, one that truly tested the limits of life on Earth, was the last glacial maximum, or LGM, which peaked around 26,500 years ago and stretched for thousands of years before and after. During this time, it wasn't just a few snowy mountains. Massive continental glaciers, miles thick, covered much of North America, the Laurentide Ice Sheet, Europe, the Scandinavian Ice Sheet, reaching into Germany and Poland, and Asia. Sea levels dropped about 400 feet, 120 meters, exposing land bridges like Beringia, which connected Siberia to Alaska, opening a path for the colonization of the Americas. The planet was a giant freezer. The landscapes of Europe and Asia, for example, weren't forests. They were vast tundras and frigid steppes, with biting winds, frozen ground, permafrost, and only low-lying vegetation adapted to the cold, like mosses and lichens. Average annual temperatures could be 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, 18 to 27 degrees Fahrenheit, lower than today. Life was tough, unforgiving, and demanded extreme adaptations. And who were our neighbors, and often our competitors and predators? The Ice Age megafauna. We're talking about legendary creatures, woolly mammoths, Mammothus primogenus, woolly rhinoceroses, Celadonta antiquitus, steppe bison, bison priscus, giant deer with antlers spanning up to 10 feet, and apex predators like cave bears, Ursus spalus, which were bigger than polar bears, and the formidable scimitar-toothed cat, Homotherium latidens, all giants, all adapted to the cold, and all of them were either food for predators or predators themselves. One mistake could cost you your life. A slip in the snow could be game over. In this scenario, we, Homo sapiens, had already migrated out of Africa tens of thousands of years ago and were colonizing Europe and Asia. We were a species, biologically speaking, adapted to the warmth of the African savannas, but we found ourselves thrown into an endless winter. Physically, we were leaner and less robust than Neanderthals, our cousins who were more biologically adapted to the cold. But we had a secret weapon a cheat code, our brain, and our unparalleled capacity for cultural innovation. We were going to have to use our heads a lot to avoid becoming human popsicles. The first and biggest weapon against the cold wasn't some fancy spear, no. It was the complete mastery, the ability to start and maintain fire whenever and wherever they wanted. This revolutionary technology, which Homo erectus had already mastered over a million years ago, was taken to a whole new level by Homo sapiens. Fire production, whether by percussion or friction, rubbing wood, was vital knowledge 
passed down from generation to generation, like your grandma's secret recipe. Fire wasn't just a little bonfire for roasting prehistoric marshmallows, it was the pulsating heart of survival and social life. Think about it. Maximum warmth and survival. In rock shelters or the complex huts they built, fire kept temperatures well above freezing, essential for preventing hypothermia and death by frostbite during the long glacial nights. VIP protection against predators. No giant wolves, cave bears, or saber-toothed tigers dared approach an open fire at night. Fire was our security barrier, our shield against the monsters of the dark and the megafauna. Light in the darkness. The long glacial nights were pitch black. Fire provided essential light for complex tasks like making and repairing tools, for socializing, for planning the next day's hunt, and for expressing creativity through cave art. The first high-tech kitchen. Cooking meat and vegetables released far more nutrients and energy. We absorbed more calories and vitamins, which fueled our growing brains and gave us energy for the demands of the cold. Plus, cooking made food easier to digest and killed parasites, improving health. And it saved time chewing raw food, giving more time for socializing and innovating. It was a major buff to health and intelligence. But the mastery of fire went beyond just warmth and cooking. They created primitive ovens, holes in the ground heated by hot stones to cook food slowly and efficiently. And they used fire to supercharge rocks. They would take silcrete, a rock not great for flaking, and bury it under a campfire, heating it slowly and controllably for hours. This process, called heat treatment, changes the rock's molecular structure, making it much easier to flake and producing incredibly sharp and durable blades. This is applied chemistry tens of thousands of years ago. It's a multi-step process that demands patience, knowledge transmission, and a deep understanding of cause and effect. Fire was our inner fortress, the center of everything, the ultimate hack against the cold. We weren't biologically built for the cold, like Neanderthals, but we were incredibly smart, and that intelligence led us to create an essential technology, clothing. And it wasn't just throwing a piece of fur over your back, it was a complex and sophisticated garment engineering. The first bone needles, with perfect eyes, emerged at least 40,000 years ago at archaeological sites like Denisova Cave in Siberia and Grotte de Rennes in France. This may seem like a simple object, but its invention was a huge technological revolution. With needles, they could sew together animal skins from mammoths, bears, reindeer, and even arctic foxes, but not just any sewing. They could make fitted, layered clothing, pants, shirts, hoods, gloves, and boots, and most crucially, Think of a high-performance snowboard jacket today. It's made of multiple layers of different materials, insulation, waterproof membrane, to keep you warm and dry, creating insulating air pockets. That's exactly what they did with different types of hides and animal sinews for thread. This created an insulating air layer close to the body, far more effective than a loose blanket. With these high-tech clothes, we spent far fewer calories staying warm, which was vital in a world of scarce food. And we could hunt for longer in colder, windier environments, like the Siberian tundra and European steppes. It was our second skin an armor against the cold that biological evolution didn't give us, but that our minds created. And shelters? They were impressive feats of engineering too. Instead of just living in caves, which weren't always available or safe, they built houses. At sites like Mezhrych in Ukraine, dated to 15,000 years ago, we find actual mammoth bone huts. Yes, mammoth bones. Dozens of mammoth mandibles, femurs, and skulls stacked and artistically interlocked to form walls and roofs covered with hides and earth for insulation. These giant houses, up to 30 feet in diameter, had central hearths and even primitive ventilation systems for smoke. This was Ice Age architecture taken to the extreme. 
Similar huts, adapted to other materials like wood and stone, were also found in Siberia. At Malta, a famous Siberian site, there were semi-subterranean houses made of bones and stones, designed to be true bunkers against the freezing cold. We didn't just survive, we built our comfort and security in the midst of chaos, bending the environment to our will. Between mastering fire and inventing sewn clothing, which of these technologies do you think was more important for Homo sapiens to conquer the endless winter? Tell me your choice in the comments. In a world where food was the highest currency, our ancestors became masters of hunting and gathering, but with a strategy that combined intelligence, planning, and immense patience. They played on hardcore mode. Megafauna hunting was a high-risk, high-reward specialty. We hunted woolly mammoths, steppe bison, and reindeer, which formed the basis of their food economy. But how? Not by brawling. It was through advanced social and technological engineering. They used the terrain to their advantage. Steep cliffs, bogs, and natural or artificially constructed snow dunes to funnel animals. At sites like La Garma in Spain, we have evidence of mass reindeer hunts where entire herds were driven into natural traps like narrow gorges and then efficiently dispatched. We didn't hunt like Neanderthals, who relied on brute force with contact spears, risking their lives with every blow. We used projectile weapons, lightweight darts with flint or bone points, thrown with atlatls, spear throwers, or later with bows and arrows. This provided an enormous safe distance, like a prehistoric sniper, minimizing the risk of direct confrontation with giant animals, which was crucial for a less physically robust species. And cooperation? It was vital. Large groups worked together to track, corner, and take down enormous animals, and then to carry and process the meat. A downed mammoth meant food for months, but required the coordinated effort of dozens of people and complex logistical planning, like an engineering project. Gathering plant and marine resources was equally important and likely led by the women of the group, who possessed an encyclopedic knowledge of plants, roots, and shellfish. On the South African coast, for example, they became masters of exploiting ocean resources. Analysis of shells found in caves shows that they knew exactly when and where to collect shellfish during low tides, a reliable and omega-3 rich food source, crucial for brain development. This dietary flexibility was our insurance policy against famine. If big game disappeared or migrated due to climate change, we had plan B, C, and D. This gave us a huge advantage over specialists like Neanderthals, who faced crisis if their main prey migrated or declined. At night, social life was our greatest fortress, our prehistoric hotspot. It kept predators at bay, provided warmth and light, and was the hub of their social life. It was around the fire that tools were made and repaired, food was shared, a pillar of our social evolution that strengthened group bonds, and, most importantly, stories were told. Knowledge was transmitted. Hunting strategies, water locations, plant properties, alliances with other groups, all of this was stored not in books but in the collective memory, reinforced by rituals, narratives, and cave art. It was our prehistoric internet, kept alive by collective memory and storytelling. Life was short and brutal. Life expectancy rarely exceeded 30 years. Infant mortality was extremely high. A broken leg or an infection could be a death sentence. But, as we've seen with Neanderthals, caring for the sick and injured was likely a crucial part of their survival strategy and compassion. An experienced individual, even if injured, was a repository of knowledge too valuable to be discarded. The community was their greatest weapon, a system of mutual support where everyone contributed and protected each other. They used their minds to create technology, symbols, and community. Of all these skills, 
the creation of advanced tools, the use of art and symbols, or strong social cooperation, which do you believe was the most decisive for our survival in that hostile world? The 100,000 years of winter wasn't just a challenge, it was a forge. Our ancestors tens of thousands of years ago weren't just surviving in Europe and Asia. They were thriving, mastering the environment in a way no other human species ever had. The pressure of extreme cold in megafauna had selected the most intelligent, the most creative, and the most cooperative. This resilience allowed Homo sapiens to do something that seemed impossible – colonize even the most inhospitable areas of the planet. They crossed the Bering Land Bridge, which connected Siberia to Alaska, and colonized the Americas facing the rigors of the Arctic Circle. They spread across Arctic Siberia, one of the coldest places on Earth, hunting mammoths and bison with their adapted technologies and ice survival strategies. The ability to culturally adapt to any environment, to create innovative solutions, and to work in large social networks was our superpower, the key to our global success. We didn't survive because we were the strongest, the fastest, or the most ferocious. We survived because we were the most adaptable, the most cooperative, and because we possessed a mind capable of imagining tomorrow and learning from yesterday. The brain you are using to understand this video was forged in fear and necessity, around a fireplace under a prehistoric sky. And if you want to gain more knowledge about this incredible journey and the lost worlds our ancestors inhabited, then you are in the right place. Continue this exploration with us. Subscribe to Extincto Doc and hit the bell so you don't miss a single chapter of our past. Leave a like if this story changed your view of our earliest ancestors, and share this video with everyone who loves to unravel the greatest secrets of our existence. Your interaction is the fuel that allows us to keep digging into the past. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.